Hello, my name is Monique D. Brown Wellens. Um, I am the CEO of Changes Wellness Recovery Center. Um, my background is forensic psychology and addiction. And actually, um, Changes Wellness Recovery Center is a new program. I've actually been performing this type of um, services since 2004. I started off providing housing for the homeless. Um, my population at that time was veterans. And then I started providing um, services for the mentally ill and um, individuals with HIV AIDS. And as it, um, Changes Wellness Recovery Center was born um, not not last year, but actually in 2014, um, by working in the criminal justice system, um, my services that I provided um, for Jerome Golden um, Center was to work with the mentally ill that um, was caught up into the criminal justice system. And <clears throat> just by working at Jerome Golden Center and working in the mental health court, um, I just seen a lot of services that was needed, like really, really needed for this population um, of the mentally ill that has been, you know, that has a substance abuse issue. And sadly, it's so many of um, this population, but there is no services. We have no services. Um, a part of my job also was required to go to the state hospitals. And at the state hospitals, I um, found sometimes individuals could not be released because there was no housing or appropriate services that the system said that was set in place for them and I found it as being a disservice and not only that um, I believe when we're dealing with this this type of population these individuals um, they need a lot more than someone just talking to them and um, pushing medication um, on them and I'm a big advocate against medication and I'm not saying that some individuals do not need to be stabilized with medication I just don't believe that that's the answer um, so changes wellness and recovery center again as I said was born in 2014 to be more of a holistic approach to providing mental health and substance abuse services to the clients here we provide a wealth of um, services again like i said not just talking to someone or prescribing meds we provide services as far as um individual group family counseling we're we're really um big on providing family support education not support but education and um counseling to the family because again i believe that um you cannot actually provide the services or so-called fix the client if you don't fix the family. Um, so we provide family counseling. I also provide um, therapeutic activities. And when I say therapeutic activities, we provide yoga, chiropractic. Uh, we provide um, job readiness training for the clients. We provide um, massage therapy. Um, different art therapy, yoga therapy, music therapy. We just provide so many different services that we think that, um, what we try to introduce the clients to that they're not introduced to because one, they either um, in their downfall, a spiral with their mental health or two, they're caught up in the substance abuse. And sometimes, unfortunately, it's both. okay let me say let me let me use like depression okay but depression and anxiety is a mood disorder okay if you know that you can't you can't you're not getting out of bed you don't want to bathe you don't want to shower you don't want to be around others you just want to close up you want your windows closed okay you need to come talk to somebody doesn't mean we're gonna write you a script because that's not always the case you just need to channel and get all that poison. that's what i call poison you know, you need to literally have a third party to talk to and be able to express yourself and see it from a different perspective. Because the only to me, I just think that you can't see it. You're you know, you're not seeing it in a clear perspective at that time. And then talking to family and friends just usually makes it worse. You know, oh, you'll be OK. You'll be all right. It, it, it'll go away. You know, get up. You need to stop thinking about it. You don't know what somebody going through. And sometimes again. 
because they have no coping skills, they can't handle that. They don't know how to handle it. They don't know how to get their stuff out of the hole. Now, when it comes to behavioral, it's more of, um, I'm going to say, like bipolar. You know what I'm saying? Bipolar is where, you know, you could be really excited and, you know, you could be jumping from this thing to that thing and rambling and talking and go spend all your money and and then you know go party and you know do things um impulsively and then you think about it and be extremely depressed you know so it's when you, if you just put it like this if you know that you're not really feeling yourself like feeling a hundred percent and you feel like something is going on with you you need to listen to yourself because usually it is something going on with you and there's nothing absolutely nothing wrong with talking to somebody about it nothing um i didn't <laughs> i believe i believe that honestly i believe that this um was chosen for me um before my background actually my well when i actually started providing the housing for the mentally ill i used to own a, a legal clinic um and i owned that for about three years and i assisted individuals with you know navigating through the court system helping them complete forms doing research for them and I, during that time i said to myself you know what i'm always helping people so i think i it's more that i really need to do in life is help people um, besides just um, pacifying them and holding their hand and making them enabling them more so so then I start getting into the real estate from my um, legal clinic we did we started doing a lot of foreclosures so I decided to get into the um, real estate and then that just took off and that just created another business on its own and during a time um, I always knew that I wanted to provide housing. My oldest brother um, died from HIV AIDS back in 1994 and he was a veteran and I watched my brother just suffer. I watched my brother, you know, pretty much give his life for his country without very limited services. So I kind of made a pact with myself and said, um, you know, when I, the time is right that I'm going to never ever ever allow another individual or another veteran at the time to have to go through what my brother went through and I'm going to be that that buffer between the community resources and that individual and as I said doing the housing it, it, that still wasn't on my mind to do that it just it just happened it just happened I just started buying so many properties and then I just said to myself that's what I'm gonna do and, and it just grew from there really it just well sadly we don't have enough funding and because we don't have enough funding we don't have enough services for individuals that are mentally ill I don't I do not believe that there is enough I'm not gonna say it's not enough education I don't believe the education is a properly is pro appropriately distributed amongst communities for people to go and get the help that they need sadly um, and I'm gonna say from you know my African Americans African Americans don't you know they don't want to face reality about um, mental illness more so they're ignorant to the fact about mental illness and it's nothing to be ashamed of and that's what's really sad um, growing up in a minority population you know we was always told you know you don't talk about things um, you sweep it up under the rug or if you didn't understand what mental illness was you will always say oh my god that person is crazy and you try to avoid them um, sadly I, I experienced it firsthand um, in my family with my sister not again not really understanding besides oh my god she is crazy you know and we avoid her and you know we we shunned her away and we just didn't deal with her but sadly my do my not my daughter but my my sister was suffering you know like really really suffering and she knew but we didn't understand like what was really wrong with her again until I actually got in this field and it's the same thing with um, substance abuse you don't understand what people go through unless you either one in this field or two you walk the same path and again we go back to my sister as well as my stepfather you know we could not you know the ones that did not drink or you know did not do drugs we couldn't understand why did they do drugs you know why were they drinking or why were they doing drugs when in all essence it's usually a coping mechanism and it goes further further down the line 
but when it comes to like the state again we don't have any money and two if the resources are not um distributed appropriately within the communities for people to even understand where one they can go to or how they can get some help we don't have enough money or funding to even try to give people free services and it's, it's really sad it's really really sad and you know this type of um this type of feel or uh, this type of business you know if you don't have the money yours is not going to get services and and with us we just don't do that you know i try to help everybody i know i cannot help every single person but i if you want the help i'm never going to turn you away never i can't say that i have a remedy i just know when it comes to like here it changes i a part of the treatment is that the the family must be involved they they, they just have to because i cannot fix my client and then send my client home to you because you're going to destroy them also families have to understand and know that 90 percent of the time we're the reason why our loved ones and i'm gonna say our kids um choose the path or do the things that they do a lot of parents don't want to hear that but they need to be called on that because you have to understand your actions causing a reaction for your kid or your actions cause a reaction for your brother your sister your mother your grandmother everybody it causes reactions the things that we actually um do that we just don't understand that we're actually doing again because we're not properly educated and that's my clients is what um Oh, you're going to make me cry. My clients is what actually keeps me going. I, I really do. I don't have any bad days. I might have frustrating days, but I don't have any bad days. But coming here and um, seeing them is what keeps me going.